What's up everybody, John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. Today's video, we're gonna talk about when you can put chicks outside for your chickens. Cause I know that's a common question for new chicken owners, stuff like that. And maybe we'll also talk about some other chicken stuff and show you around the farm, show you what's going on here. Just hanging out in the emu pen right now. We have one who, uh, the other day, for whatever reason, the emus were running around like crazy and they were running into like the fence and it looks like one of them got a little scrape on his neck. So I just put some blue coat on him and he's been hanging out in the barn. So I'm not sure if he like really scared himself or not or something like that. Uh, but he was laying down yesterday and uh, Catherine was having some trouble getting him up, but he's now up now and he's got his own water and his own food. He seems to be doing fine. So just wanted to check on him real quick. Anywho, so, I know one one super common question is is when it comes to chickens is when your chicks can go outside and believe me I've been there when you're brooding chickens especially when they're in your house they create a lot of problems they are messy they can be smelly you got to change their water all the time especially when they're little you have to keep their waterers like down low to the ground and then if you have you know, pine shavings in there. They love to kick the pine shavings into the water and then you gotta clean the water out even more than usual. It's a big pain in the butt. So it is always a great day when you can get those chickens outside. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna prep one of our coops here because we have <laughs> several open. But interestingly, none of the low ones. So, because when we built this, uh, chicken village. You know, you can see some of these coops here are basically right level with the ground. But then as they get further that way, they're up. So, may, but I think this one will be okay. Because they're... The problem that we're having is uh, the chicks that we have currently on the porch, we have them in a big metal tub, but now they're jumping out of the tub. So they shouldn't have any problem getting in and out of here. So I think I'll probably prep this run to have some little chickens in it. We'll bring the chickens out here. I think that's what we'll do. So this is actually our grow out pen here. And so these are our youngest chickens that are out and about. And so these are a mix. I think it doesn't look like there's any Samani's in there. So I think these are mostly our olive egger. Uh, so these are F2s. And then I think there's a, a Wheaton Americana back there somewhere, but it's hard to say. But yeah, so these look all, I guess some of these could be uh, just black copper Morans, but like that one right there up on the roost is for sure an F2 olive egger, the ones that are sort of gray. So it's always exciting to see that. Hopefully they should start laying eggs soon. None yet though, huh? There's a wheat and Americana right there. There's our I am Samani's. Can we crow? Yeah, thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. We've had to do a little bit of balancing because like you can see on this chicken's back, the uh, roosters are being a little rough. So we've had to just kind of balance our rooster population because the roosters can be kind of buttheads. And actually we found, so I know one of Catherine's favorites are the sham, some of Catherine's favorites are the chamois Spitzhaubens, but I guess she had one of these roosters come after her this morning. So she was not a big fan of that. Probably that guy. That guy's kind of a jerk. And then here's one another grow out group. And so So these well that's a toll bunt. These I think are wheat and Americanas again, or maybe wheat and Morans. But like that guy right there, the black and white. 
Those are lemon owl beards. I had, I had never heard of them before. We got a birch and cochin way in the corner there, the little guy. Looks like maybe two. And then I uh, got a couple I'm Samani's in here, so that'll be good. A couple of toll bunts saying hello. Cool, huh? All right, so I just stuffed the water in that coop. And now I'm gonna go up and see if I can uh, box these chickens up real quick and bring them down here. So I just realized I didn't even begin to answer the question that I started in this video, which is when is it okay to bring chicks outside? So basically for us, there are two things uh, that are most important when you're determining whether you can put your chicks outside or not. One is safety and two is temperature. So in terms of safety, there's a couple things. One, if you're integrating chicks into an existing flock, that can be one of the most stressful times in a chicken parent or chicken's life because there really is such a thing as pecking order. So when you input new chicks into an existing flock, it can sort of upset that whole order and create a lot of chaos. So there's a lot of things that you can do when that happens. The easiest way to transition is if you can do it at night when everybody's already roosting, then you just basically insert the new chickens right on the roosting bar, right along those new chickens. And most of the time, the next day when they wake up and they go out of their house and they do whatever, they're fine. Now there's still gonna be some squabbles because there's a new pecking order, but uh, what other things you can do is you can distract them. So a lot of times if you do the nighttime swap, the next day, give them like a nice big treat first thing in the morning. Like we always recommend uh, like a, a head of cabbage because it kind of rolls around and it gives them some nice greens to eat and stuff to do. The more you can distract them, the better. The other thing that you can do is you can reset the pecking order by pulling out some of the chickens. Now, if you're putting them into a small flock and you know who like the head chicken is, you can pull that one out keep that one separate for a couple days and then put all of them in there together and that should be fine so that's one aspect of safety is just like chicken to chicken you want to make sure also that they are relatively same size and that there's more than one because obviously if you put one new chicken in a flock of 10 all 10 of those chickens can pick on that one little one if you put them in with a group of two or three there's a better chance that they can defend themselves and they'll at least have a little click that they can take care of um but so again, so if you're putting them in an existing flock, you can either insert them at night, you can give them treats to distract them, you can disrupt the pecking order by pulling out like the other chickens and then putting them back, or uh, <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> so, so that's in terms of chicken safety from chicken to chicken. Now the other thing you wanna keep in mind is safety from predators, because when you introduce chickens outside, especially chicks, they're gonna make little peep, 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 peep noises. They're not gonna be doing the bok, 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 bok. That's enticing to predators because they know that it's a baby. They know that there's babies around. Babies are generally easier to uh, take than adults. So when you have a lot of little peepers going around, that can be dangerous. So what a lot of people do sometimes is that they wait to put the chickens outside until they are uh, not making those little chick noises anymore. Now, for us, we put our chickens away by hand every single night. So we lock them up inside their wooden coops so that we know that they are safe. But all of our predators really come at night. And so since they come at night, we put all the chickens away. We also have, you know, emus on one side over here and we have alpacas on the other side. So really, if anything comes around, they're going to have to be brave enough to pass those two sets of giant animals to get to our chickens. So our chickens are safe. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have a plan for when you put your chicks outside in terms of safety, whether that's making sure that the run is extra secure, the coop is extra secure, whatever. You wanna make sure, because those little babies out there are gonna be more enticing to predators, gotta make sure they're safe. So and the other thing is temperature. And so you wanna make sure, and it's, it's really simple, you wanna make sure it's warm enough on a consistent enough basis outside that the chicks are not gonna freeze. Now. When chicks are first born, 
the right ambient temperature for them is 95 degrees. And then that first week, you want to keep the temperature at 95. And then you basically subtract five degrees per week that they're alive after that. So after one week, it's 90 degrees. After two weeks, it's 85 degrees. And after three weeks, it's 80 degrees, so on and so forth until they're hardy enough to live outside forever. So as long as your temperature outside isn't going to dip below, you know, what their really core temperature should be at, that should be fine. The chicks that we have on the porch, I think are five or six weeks old. So they should be able to, they should be fine with 60 degree or somewhere around their temperatures. And so since we are now in May, it's like 80 degrees today. It's very nice. They should do very well outside. The other thing you want to look for in terms of temperature is that they are fully feathered, which means they no longer have the little chicken or, or chicky fluff feathers. They have their full feathers that are flat um, because chickens in that case can retain their own heat. So they're much more hardy uh, to weather changes. When chicks just have the fluff, they can't retain their own body heat. But when they have their full feathers, they can puff up and you'll see them in winter they'll puff up and they'll keep little air um, in between their feathers that's heated by their body temperature and that's how they stay warm throughout the winter so we meet all of those conditions so i'm going to go grab those chicks put them outside and i'll check back in with you in a minute all right so we got everybody in there so you can see so even though that one's like a little looks really small that's a birch and cochin so that's a bantam but you can see the full feathers there as opposed to the chicken fuzz or chick fuzz. So they should be fine. Everybody coming out. So that must be a Wheaton Americana. That must be a Wheaton Moran. Looks like we got a Birchin Rooster. Thinking that's a Jubilee Orpington there. Not 100% sure, but got a couple I Am Samanis in there too. Very nice. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.